In this video, I'm going to tell you the 8 important rules you need to know in order to read Roman numerals and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa and if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's get right to it. So today when we talk about numbers, the most common form is Arabic numerals. That is 1, 2, 3 and so on. However, if you take a look at some older prescriptions, you will not see Arabic numerals but rather what you will see is Roman numerals. Now that is because in ancient times, Roman numerals were used for pharmaceutical computations and record keeping. So they were either used to specify the quantity of an ingredient in the apothecary system or to specify the units of dosage to be dispensed. Now in our current system of prescription writing, the use of Roman numerals is actually minimal. However, they are used to represent the different schedules of controlled substances, so for example, schedule 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and some physicians still use them in dosage calculations. Therefore, as pharmacy students, pharmacy technicians, pharmacists, there is still a need to understand how to read Roman numerals. Now, an Arabic number in the Roman system of numbers is designated by a letter. Now, there are a stem of numbers that are used in the Roman system of numbers and that is what is shown in the table. So you have half being SS, 1 being I, 5 being V, 10 being X, 50 being L, 100 being C, 500 being D, and 1000 being M. Now, these eight stem numbers serve as the building blocks by which other numbers in the Roman system are generated. Now, in order to generate numbers in the Roman system, you need to understand and follow eight important rules. And the first rule is the rule of addition. So the rule of addition states that when a lower number is right after a higher number, you add all the numbers together. So as an example, if you have x, v, i, the x is 10, the v is 5, and the i is 1. Now i is less than v and the i is to the right of the v and the v is to the right of the x. So x is 10, v is 5 and i is 1. So you add up the 10, the 5 and the 1 and you end up with 16. So let's look at another example. So here you have v, i, i, i. And so the i which is 1 is to the right of v and the i is lower than the v. So you have v which is equals 5 plus i which is equal to 1 plus i which is equal to 1 plus i which is equal to 1 so 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and that gives you 8. Now the next rule is the rule of subtraction. So the rule of subtraction states that whenever a lower number precedes a higher number the lower number is subtracted from the higher number. So as an example you have i x the i which is 1 precedes the x which is 10 and i is lower than x so you have 10 minus 1 and that gives you 9. Another example x l x is 10 l is 50 the x precedes the l and x is lower than l so you have 50 minus 10 and that will give you 40. Now it's important to mention here that there are three numbers that are never to be subtracted from greater numbers and those numbers are v d and l. So now let's take a look at rule number three which shows you what to do when you have a smaller number between two large numbers. And here we'll use an example to illustrate this rule. So we have x i v x equals 10 i equals 1 and v equals 5. Now i which is 1 is smaller than x and v so you have a smaller number between two large numbers. So now because i precedes v you calculate it by taking 5 and subtracting 1 from that. That is based on rule number 2. So that gives you 4. And now you have 4 which is to the right of a larger number. So you have 10 plus 4 and that gives you 14. Let's take a look at another example. So here we have m, x and c which is equal to 1090 in Arabic numbers. Now m equals 1000, 10 equals 10 and c equals 100. Now 10 
is smaller than 1000 and smaller than 100, so you have the situation where you have a smaller number between two large numbers. And so since the x precedes the c, we make use of rule number 2, which is the rule of subtraction, and you calculate it by having 100 minus 10 that gives you 90. Now 90 is to the right of a larger number, which is 1000, so you add them using rule number 1, and so you have 1000 plus 90, and that gives you 1090. So the next rule, which is rule number 4, says to avoid the repetition of more than three consecutive occurrences of the same letter. So here we'll use an example to illustrate how this rule works. So if you have the number 8, which is the Arabic number 8, then it's given as VIII. -I -I. So you have three I's after the V. What you can do is to say 8 equals I, 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 I. So eight I's. That doesn't work because you're repeating the I more than three consecutive times. Another example, 490 in Arabic numbers is going to be equal to CDXC and not CCCCXC. Because for the CCCCXC, you're repeating the C more than three consecutive times. Rule number five, you need to use the largest value numeral. So in accordance with rule number four, when required, the largest value numeral should be used. So let's look at an example. If you have the Arabic number 92, that should be equal to XCII and not XXXXXXXXXII. So instead of using all those bunch of X's, we will rather use the larger value numeral, which would be C, and then put an X before that so that we can make use of the rule of subtraction, which is rule number two, and then add II to it, which would be using rule number one, the rule of addition. Let's look at another example. So Arabic number 499 should be equal to CDXCIX and not CCCC. X, 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 I, X. And so here, we are making use of rule number five by using the largest value numeral, which would be D in this particular example. So you have CD, which gives us 400, instead of C, 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 C. And then we have XC, which gives us the 90, instead of nine Xs. And then you add the ix, which gives you the 9. Rule number 6, the power of 10. So the smaller number must be a power of 10 and cannot precede a number more than 10 times its value. So let's look at an example. You have 490 as an Arabic number. And Roman numerals is going to be cdxc. So let's see how this works. So the C, which precedes the D, the C is a power of 10. That's 10 to the power 2. And it's not more than 10 times the value of D. So if you took C, which is 100, and multiply that by 10, that's basically 1,000. 1,000 is more than 500. So you can actually write CD. Same thing for XC. X is a power of 10. X is 10, so that will be 10 to the power 1. And C equals 100, so 10 times X will be 10 times 10, which is 100, and that's about the same value. So you can do C, D, X, C. Now, what you cannot do is X, D. So even though X is still a power of 10, so 10 is equal to 10 to the power 1, if you multiply 10 by 10 times its value, you get 100. But 100 is less than D, which is 500. So based on the rule of the power of 10, you cannot do that. Let's take a look at another example. So here you have 99 as an Arabic number, and that should be equal to XCIX as a Roman numeral. Now the X, which is 10, precedes C, which is 100. X is a power of 10, which is 10 to the power of 1. And 10 times 10 will be 100, which is still equal to C. So you are good there. Now I is still a power of 10, which is 10 to the power of 0. And if you multiply that by 10, you still have 10. So 10 is equal to X, which would be 10. And so you can still do X, C, I, C. What you cannot do is I, C. And that is because even though I is a power of 10, basically 10 to the power of 0, if you multiplied I by 10 times its value, you get 10. And this 10 is less than C, which represents 100. 
So based on the rule of the power of 10, you cannot do that. Rule number seven, use only one preceding smaller number. So there cannot be more than one smaller number in front of a larger number. Let's look at an example. So 48 in Arabic numbers will be equal to X, L, V, I, I, I. What you cannot do is write the Arabic number 48 in Roman numerals as I, I, L. Because even though you may be trying to use the rule of subtraction, which is rule number two, you have more than one small number in front of a larger number. So that will violate rule number seven, and so you cannot do that. Let's look at another example. 97 as an Arabic number can be written as X, C, V, I, I. What you cannot do is write the Arabic number 97 as I, 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 C, because you have more than one small number in front of a larger number. You have three I's in front of the C, so that violates rule number seven, and you cannot do that. Rule number eight, using a bar. So a bar placed on top of a letter increases the numeral's value 1,000 times. Let's look at an example. So here, the Roman numeral XIX will be equal to the Arabic number 19. But if you placed a bar on top of the XIX, now you have the Arabic number 19,000. And that is because the bar increases the numeral's value 1,000 times. Let's look at another example. The Roman numeral VII is equal to the Arabic number 7. But if you placed a bar on top of the VII, now you have the Arabic number 7,000. And that is because, once again, placing a bar on top of the Roman numeral increases its value 1,000 times. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.